A sudden realization of a mental illness can be beneficial, a downfall of which can lead to a world of loneliness and isolation. Such things cannot be cured. A boy discovers disability after his curiosity had got the better of him. However, unbeknownst to him, the loneliness and isolation that comes with was not discovered. Of course, having opened this door, the option of breaking free was there, but the will was not. And it became a question of mind or matter. Day one, the last easy day the boy will ever experience. Naturally, he has no idea of this. Every morning is awoken with the same bodily corruption, the least of the boy's worries, the final dependent substance between the thin line between reality and emptiness. The boy kills the day away, substituting time with his own meaningless activities, in hopes of a condition change. Yet, not a single change appears. Nonetheless, he continues these meaningless activities, hoping and hoping and hoping and hoping something, anything will change. As per his daily routine, a fresh dose of substance abuse prepares the body for its consumptuous activities. The boy sits Staying in one position all day, acting only as a vessel for a fragile mind, both at the brink of utter devastation. Of course, the boy refuses this. He rejects the philosophy that his mind is getting worse, and he truly believes he can fight this. Hence the fact he does not think about his medical condition and he substitutes his own thoughts with mindless camaraderie. He plays the day away as if it were nothing, as if time were not a factor, as if he can sit all day doing what he likes without a care in the world and everything will go away. The third day adds an aspect of repetition. The boy lives on blissfully unaware of the events that will unfold in the future. He sits mindlessly, playing his guitar, reading books, abusing his body with cigarettes in an attempt to control his ever-fragile weeping mind. The same weeping mind that is constantly begging for escape. The same mind which has been passed down from isolation to isolation, creating a little bubble in his mind of sanctuary, believing that he is truly okay. Naturally, the boy rejects these philosophies, like he does the day before, and the day before, and as he continues 
and as he plans to do until it goes away. He hopes that by forgetting it exists, it may someday leave him forever. Two weeks have passed since the symptoms started. The boy finally will reap the consequences of his ignorance, as the repetition of each day comes to a close. As the sunset of emptiness begins to emerge on the valley that is his own thoughts. However, the boy recognises he must fight this that he must get better. He believes it is not healthy to be ill, not realising that he is all alone and that he must face this alone. He believes nobody is there, as if he's trapped in his own universe. And like the creator of a universe, he believes he has full control over it. Unwilling to admit the fact that other forces may also have an impact on this perfect world he's created. He believes he must return to normality, become an upstanding citizen of society. He believes he must be like everyone else, that he is not healthy. He believes that if he just keeps fighting and rejecting the philosophy, rejecting the idea that something is intruding in his mind, that it will just vanish and he can be normal again. He believes that he should be like everyone else. He believes he must keep living. The boy begins his day with his natural consumption of corrupted drugs. He begins ploughing through the day like normal with the same repetition, his endless marching to fulfil his inner mind, except something's different. It's not as easy for him to realise or remember where he is anymore. The boy is scared. He won't show the fact he's scared, in fear he'll lose his mind. But in reality, he's terrified. He believes that what's taking over his mind is not there. And he sits and tells himself repeatedly, it's not there, it's not there, the boy does not know what repercussions will come, lest he acknowledge the existence and seek help from people who can give it to him. Nonetheless, the boy chooses the path of isolation.
Two months have passed. Everything the boy has worked towards has come down to this one day. The built up bowl of hatred and anger. All those months of rejected philosophy against all known facts, all medical science and everyone that could help him. The boy has successfully created a temple of pure solitude and isolation, a perfect limbo, you might say. An escape from all form of being, all form of being who corrupt his sanctuary that he so perfectly created, a certain deliverance of Armageddon against an innocent mind, a hive mind, who of which has burrowed a tunnel of thoughts through the boy's mind. He loses all sense of being. He's scared. He's terrified. No one understands the absolute painful enigma, excruciating its way deeper and deeper into his own substantial mind. Killing his thoughts over and over until eventually everything is lost. The perfect colony of emptiness repeating the same march over and over and over. And over. And over. And... Over. and
over. Everything is over. The first of many cycles has come to a close. The boy lays contemplating his existence, contemplating his place in the universe, an endless battle with his own thoughts and his own mind, his own perception of reality, broken only by his own creation. This idea of isolation, this is his life now. He may have fueled the fire, unknowingly getting deeper and deeper into his own pit of despair. However, when all is said and done, he did not ask for this. Nor did he ever want it to happen to him. He doesn't want this to happen to anyone else. He believes nobody should go through the same pain he has. Despite everything, he does not resent his illness, nor does he start to fight it. However, he will still never accept it. He must just simply live in his own fictional pain. <laughs>